Okay, we're on this explain three section, and uh, we're going to be using those sine and cosine ratios to find missing pieces. And again, it's very much, it's very similar to the tangent ratios that we were using before. And here's a little uh, diagram of what we're going to be doing. It's it's the function, so we're going to be plugging in the angle, right? In this case, angle theta, plugging it into there and getting the ratio of the sides, which in this case, when we're using sine, remember, is opposite over hypotenuse. So. Uh, go ahead and go through the examples yourselves. We're going to be going through the your turn section, which actually they've done for us. I didn't realize this. Um, but uh, let's just explain this, actually, because it, it might be worth uh, kind of investigating here. We have this setup here. Sine is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which if we're looking at the sine of A, it's the opposite wall, which is BC, over the hypotenuse, which is AAC, right? which uh, they have the correct setup there. And so in the second section, they've uh, plugged in the numbers. The sine of 8, which is the degrees right there that we are given, is going to be the wall, which is 2.3 over what we're looking for, AC. Okay, So you use a bit of algebra, and you should come out with AC equals 16 and a half. So the ramp has to be 16 and a half feet. So we're going to be using, again, it looks like we're going to be using Desmos, so I'll pull up the calculator in a second. But again, really not very much different from what we did with the tangent ratios. And that's the beauty of, of, uh, of what we're learning here in this introduction to trigonometry. Uh, once you know one thing, you pretty much know how some of the other stuff works, right? So the mechanics of it are very similar. So here's explain four section. I will let you read on your own. Uh, and let's jump into your turn question number one here. So uh, we're asked, to find the measure of angle y, and in this case, we have to we have to decide what we're going to use. Are we going to use um, sine or cosine, right? And in this case, if we're looking for y, what we are given is the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So if we if we remember, so uh, I can't write to right. So which one of these, right? Sine, cosine, or tangent deals with the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, if you investigate a little bit, you'll see that the cosine is the one that deals with the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So that's what I'm going to use. The cosine of y right, is going to equal the adjacent, which is 14, over the hypotenuse, which is 23. And so let's pull up the uh, Desmos calculator. And now that we have the calculator pulled up here, we're gonna we're gonna do some investigating here. Okay, now uh, I've set up the problem, but we're we can't really solve it the way we wrote it. We actually have to, if you recall with me, we're gonna have to go with the inverse cosine to find the angle. So the inverse cosine of 14 over 23 that will give us the angle. That's what we're looking for, right? That's what I should have started with. So inverse cosine of 14 divided by 23 gives us 52 and a half. So there's our angle. It's approximately 52.5 uh, degrees, right? Measure angle Y. Okay, so that's the answer to that one. And then here's uh, the measure of angle Z. We're looking for um, Z. Let me actually erase some of this here just so we have a clean slate. And in the case of Z, we're dealing with the opposite. Oops opposite over the hypotenuse so we're going to take the sine right in this case the inverse sine well, let's learn from what we the mistake we made in um, question the previous question the inverse sine of the opposite over hypotenuse which is 14 over 23 will give us the angle measure the approximate angle measure so let's punch that in there inverse sine of 14 divided by 23 uh, we get 37 point Four nine. Let's go with thirty-seven point five-ish. So that is the measure of angle Z. So there's our answer to question. Your turn. Question number two.